Uh, data link layer, layer two. Uh, this is where the uh, the broadcast domain is is limited to. Uh, broadcast domain is a group of nodes that can receive each other's broadcast messages segmented by a router. Um, and then a collision domain is a group of nodes that share the same media segmented by a switch. Um, I think we'll go into later like the differences. In fact, I know we'll go into later the differences between like a switch and a hub and a switch and a bridge and, and why the you know why a hub is a dumb device and a switch is able to actually segment out the collision domain so you don't have packets colliding with each other. Um, you know, whenever you've you've got uh, just like a hub, you have to have CSM A C D uh, collision detect uh, carrier sense multiple carrier sense multiple axis and collision detection, which is basically like a, a little algorithm that whenever you've got all of all of these uh, nodes, you know, a bunch of PCs in the same collision domain, anytime data like sends at the same time and happens to hit each other, they all have to go through this little backup algorithm where they, they all stop transmitting for a certain amount of time, or actually it's a random amount of time based on an algorithm, and then, you know, one will start transmitting, and you have to keep going through this over and over and over in a collision domain. A switch and a bridge uh, corrects that, but all of this stuff is still in the layer two area. Uh, let's see, there's two layers, two actually sub layers to the data link layer, the media access control layer and the uh, logical link control layer. The Mac layer, uh, you guys, especially working in the NOP, you've probably seen this printed on the back of um, cable modems and routers and all that kind of thing. It's a hard-coded address on the NIC. Um, every NIC has one. It's 48 bits, 48 bits, uh, zeros and ones, 12 hexadecimal digits, uh, 0 through 9 and A through F. We'll get into hexadecimal, like I said, chapter 5, um, but it, it's basically a, a collection of 4 bits. You're counting up to 16, or actually 0 through 15. Since you, you can't, uh, you're trying to keep it as a single digit, it's going to go 0 through 9 and A through F. The first six hexadigits identify the manufacturer. Um, so, like, if you guys go to, you know, a MAC address cross-reference site, there's a bunch of them on the internet, and you plug in a, a MAC address, what it does is it strips off those first six digits of the hex uh, identifier of the MAC address, and it, it can tell you, like, which uh, manufacturer those are registered to. The last six head hex digits on that MAC address are specific to that device, so, you know, a, a manufacturer will get their, their identifier, their six hex digits, and then the each device that they create for however long of a period will uh, you know segment those out. Under the uh, the Mac layer, you've got the logical link control layer LLC. Um, this complements the Mac layer uh, with framing error and flow control. And then the physical layer, as we talked about before, uh, the physical media data will traverse. No, excuse me, the physical medium. That's actually I need to correct that. Physical. Oh. The physical medium that data will traverse, uh, specifications of voltage, wire speed, and pinout capables, capability of sending and receiving signals. So, you know, the physical layer can be uh, wireless, it can be uh, an Ethernet cable, etc. Okay, so on top of the OSI model, uh, we've got the TCP IP model as well. This was uh, developed by the Department of Defense. Um, it actually l lines up pretty well with the OSI model, and I know that I had a, a couple of questions on the TCP IP model. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, actually, Vibrate, baby. Vibrate. the one question I can specifically remember having was um, was a, a simulation where they would have the, the application layer or vice versa lined up like all right and then you had to match up like the layers of the TCP IP model where that the, the OSI model links up at. So on the TCP IP model the first the seven five six and seven on the OSI model are all broken down and just listed as application. Uh, layer four is the same so that's easy to remember it's transported on both sides and then the, the layer three is uh, listed as the internet layer rather than network layer. These are all still doing the same functions. All of the, the protocols we talked about in the OSI layer, they all fit into the respective layer on the TCP IP model. Um, and then the, the bottom two layers of the TCP IP model are also squished, or from the OSI model are also squished in the TCP IP model to the network interface layer. So physical medium and data link is all just network interface on the TCP IP model.
this is just like the OSI, it's just memorization. You're going to have to memorize it. Oh, and then uh, this is kind of a, I guess I probably had some questions on this. Um, this is uh, Cisco's three layer hierarchical model of building networks. Uh, starting from the bottom, you have your access layer, which are usually like dumb switches uh, where all of the individual, individual um, PCs and stuff connect. And then right above that, you'll have your uh, either you know a router or a smarter switch that kind of all of the um, the individual. Th this kind of model is really meant for like a, a larger network. To me, they can kind of compress like part of this into two layers. Like most most networks, unless you're talking about like a really high end headquarters or a campus network or something like that, the core layer and the distribution layer are probably going to be compressed into a single layer. But Cisco's, um, you know, ideas for redundancy and making sure you have multiple fellowovers and that kind of thing has this three-layer hierarchical model where you have, you know, an access layer, a distribution layer where all the individual access switches connect to, and then a core layer that hires the the higher-level functions. Um, you know, and, and part of this too is like it, it, they're worried about like uh, processors on individual routers being held down because they're they're worrying about too much doing too much at one time. So once again, this is not a model for you know, like in our field, an individual restaurant franchisee. This is like a headquarters kind of thing, and a big, a big headquarters at that. And that's all there is to chapter one. Um, any questions on that stuff? Like I said, it's a lot of memorization, um, but you're just going to have to kind of read it and memorize it. So any, any questions pertaining to the actual material, though? And the crickets are quiet.